I'm AC, welcome to Bit Seizure. <laughs> Now today we're going to be talking about the Famicom Disk System. What is the Famicom Disk System? Why wasn't it released outside of Japan? Let's take a look. First of all, the Disk System itself isn't its own console. It's more or less a peripheral for the family computer, or the Famicom. As you'll see, the original Famicom here lines up perfectly and has the same kind of colour scheme. Now, when many Japanese people think of the Famicom, and me too, I must admit, I will always think of it with the disk system at the bottom. That's why it looks complete to me. Now, let's see. First of all, we've got the uh, RAM cartridge here at the top. So you open the little flap up here and insert it. Now, this connects to the system down the bottom. Now, the Famicom disk system itself will run off either a 9 volt uh, AC adapter or it can actually run off 6 C-sized batteries. Now that's good for me because I don't have the original AC adapter although apparently you can use the Famicom adapter in a pinch. I'm not sure if that will ruin it or not but it probably wouldn't with short term use. Now what they would do with the Famicom Disk System is with the discs themselves you can actually take them to a sort of vending machine and you can have them rewritten. So as you can see here I've got a disc. It isn't the original disc but if uh, you got say Mario on it and you said oh I've played Mario I've played the hell out of it. You can take it back and say I want a new game and then you could put a new game on there for about, say, 2,000 to 3,000 yen. So about 20 to 30 bucks. So I'll have Super Mario 2, please. Ouch. I'll say to that. Now, what's interesting here is that along the bottom, it'll actually say Nintendo. These discs are a little different from the PC discs that are used uh, back in the 80s. Now, these, this Nintendo looks kind of like a branding, but is actually a form of copy protection. There is a plate on the inside, so when you put it up there, the, um, the I and the N here are actually more pronounced. They're kind of deeper holes. It means it'll fit right in there. You can actually get past it. If you have a similar sort of discs, you can just rip the bottom off, and apparently that'll work. Although they were still a special kind of disc that only you could get in uh, Akihabara, Japan. Now, as for the discs themselves, they suffered from one major flaw. They did not, until kind of the later part of the series, have a dusk cover going across the top. Now, why use discs? Sounds kind of funny. That's because the Famicom Disk System was released in 1986. Back then, cartridges were actually really expensive to produce, and there was no battery backup. The best you could do was a password. The great thing about the disk system was that you could actually save files because you can write onto a disk. So with games like uh, Metroid, as you see here, Metroid uh, is a very long game. Now the English version uses a password system. This one just simply saves the data on there. Now you start at the start every time, but at least you have all your weapons and you know certain parts of the map. So it's actually very useful. After a couple of years, cartridges actually became cheaper, so by that stage it wasn't really worth releasing the disk system outside of Japan. However, the disk system was uh, in service, so to speak, uh, and Nintendo would perform repairs right up until 2003. Over 4.4 million of these things are sold. So, they're not exactly rare, and a lot of them still come in the box, which is good. There is one fatal flaw with these systems, though the drive belt. Now the original drive belt that Nintendo used was kind of cheap, it was a kind of a plasticky rubber. Problem with that was that it would either snap and sometimes even melt, which could ruin the entire disc system. I'm fortunate enough to have one here that has a new belt put in it and a much better quality one. So let's take a look at the games. First of all, we're going to play volleyball. Now on the back of this card here, this disc card, it actually says, kick and run. 
Now, Kick and Run isn't, uh, obviously a soccer game, uh, but Kick and Run isn't on this one. This is an example of getting a disc and not knowing what's on it. Why? Because people will take them to these kind of vending machines and get people to write new games on them. Ice Hockey is actually on here, and that is a pretty cool game. Okay, then I'm going to show you Metroid for a little bit. I've got Super Mario Brothers 1. Hey, we've all seen that. However, a little bit of a treat for you. I have Super Mario Brothers 2, the original and incredibly difficult Japanese edition. Most people have not seen the original. They've only seen the All-Stars version. And last of all, and certainly not least, I actually managed to find an unopened copy of 3D Hot Rally, which is Famicom Grand Prix 2. What's interesting about this game is uh, it actually had the original disc system uh, kind of mascot on the front. And you know, I knew it wasn't used because as soon as you break this seal, uh, you get an imprint of the sticker, uh, which is used for security reasons behind it. Now this comes with the manual. So let me uh, open here. And the disc. So the manual there is... Uh, is quite pretty. It's actually uh, meant to be Mario in the, the little cart. But what's brilliant about this is that the later models of the disc carts, they finally said, oh yeah, it's uh, kind of a bit dodgy how we don't have those uh, disc, the dust covers. So they managed to put a dust cover across the top. So this is one of the latest games. Not only that, but you can actually play this particular game with the Famicom 3D glasses. I don't have a copy of those, unfortunately, but this game is still pretty good. Anyway, let's go back to volleyball and give it a go. First of all, we have the startup sequence for the disc system. It'll ask you to insert the disc card, which is what they're called officially. And you've got little Luigi coming out here, turning off the lights, changing the colors, and then Mario comes out. It's a nice little loop until you insert the disc, which we will do right now. Okay, the first game we've got is Volleyball. Now we're just going to jump straight into it. Here is the select screen. You can be uh, the women team, the men team, one or two players. I'm just going to play as the women. I'll be Japan against Brazil. Okay, there's uh, Brazil on the right, and there is us on the left, Japan. There is no Australia. Okay, and service. Now the ball is pretty big and you are helped by the shadow underneath. Now it's been about 20 years since I played volleyball last, which is saying something. Although I kind of got the hang of this, at least in terms of getting a rally going, scoring points is much, much more difficult. So what you do is you need to pass the ball within your own team first a couple of times. I guess like in real volleyball. Okay, and I just lost my first point. This is a reoccurring theme here, by the way. So, ooh, I lost another one. Man, I suck at this. I love the way they dance as well. They just kind of sit there and just kind of hover and wiggle their little booty. Cute booty. Both teams, actually, for sprites. Anyway, where was I? Oh, okay, lost another point. So the A button will pass within your team. You can use the D-pad to pass to another player However, the problem here is that moving your players up and down is kind of dependent on the game and who's closest to the ball. So if you want someone to move up, the person that the game thinks is closest to the ball might move down and then you miss the ball. So as the team, uh, the Brazil team is now demonstrating here, you spike it at the end. You do that with B. However, pulling this off, passing it within your team, uh, passing it again to someone on the front line, and then spiking it is something that I have not been able to achieve yet. And it's been really frustrating. Occasionally someone will fall flat on their asses too, which is pretty funny. Now let's have a look here. And yep, yeah, we got a good one going. Oh, one more time. All we... Oh, of course. Now, the shadow doesn't always help because you're not... As it goes up, you think it might be going up or down. But uh, it'll only help to a certain extent. Luckily... It, the hit detection isn't too bad, uh, and she just fell down again, and I think she was replaced. See, I tried to spike it back then, and I lost another point. That's right, that's how hard spiking it is. Now, they've been managed to get it past me pretty much every time so far. It's pretty humiliating, I've got to say, but at least I've got a couple of good rallies going. That's something for me. Uh, here it comes again. Oh, 
Ah, oh, you can see your panties. <laughs> that's kind of cute. No, I'm just kidding. They're all wearing panties. And I think that's just about it for volleyball. Not a bad game, certainly, but kind of annoying, at least in terms you get the hang of it. Next up, we've got ice hockey. Now, this can be a one or two player games. Of course, I'm playing by myself today. And you've got six countries to choose from. Now, in honor of the uh, recently concluded Winter Olympics, I'm going to be playing as Canada versus the USA. Let's hope I can replicate their victory. You can choose their speed, one, two, three, four, five, or their time. I'm going to choose the lowest speed, of course, at the moment. Now, this is really interesting. You can choose the height, thickness, thinness of your players. Uh, the taller ones will obviously be faster, uh, and the squatter, fatter ones will be more powerful. And now we've got the two uh, fat guys in the center here, and that guy looks like David Bowie, weirdly enough. I don't know why I think that. So this is a pretty fast-paced game, I have to say, and the disc system holds up really well. Sometimes you're going to get a bit of kind of a melee and everything is going to start uh, fluxing a little bit and characters run into each other, but uh, it's not too bad. You've got five players each side, including the goalie. Now, I don't really know what icing is, but I'm guessing it's where they put it near the goal here and David Bowie comes out and he's a busy man, David Bowie. Okay, so once again, it's so, what will happen is you will start flashing when you're near the puck and fortunately your goalie will kind of move alongside with them so just in case the puck gets near the goal you can uh, of course react to it quick enough. It's a pretty clever system really I've got to say. Uh, I just stopped a goal going through there which is good. Uh, and these guys are fast however they get the, the puck taken off them pretty quickly. Now I've got to say, we don't play a lot of ice hockey in Australia, so I don't always understand what's going on, but it seems pretty self-explanatory to me, other than the whole icing, blue circle, David Bowie thing. Okay, now once again, the team you're opposing is good, but they're not quite up to the standard of the volleyball one, which means you actually have a chance to score goals. And if you practice this game, I reckon you could get pretty good at it, especially if you know how to stack your players. Now I've got another icing uh, over here. Now two fat players who look kind of like Mario. Now comes David Bowie. And Booyah! Now the little guys are pretty quick, as I said before. You press A to pass and B, oh, and they just scored a goal to strike. So they're doing a little dance. You'll eat that puck in a minute, boys. Boys in blue. I like the fact that Canada is green just because I like that color, I suppose. And I'm playing as Canada today uh, in honor of my friend Steve, who does Catmax Gaming. Look it up on YouTube. It's a really, really good channel. Uh, I'm probably not uh, doing Canada much honor at the moment, though, as I haven't scored yet. Now, their goalies are also pretty proficient, so you kind of got to strike at the right moment here. And we're kind of heading towards the end of uh, end of the first game, really. So I'm determined to score at least oh one goal. And they've scored two now, so I don't like the idea of this being a tie, but maybe I can score another one. Okay, here we go. Come on, boys. David Bowie comes out. Here is your puck. And come on, you can do it. That's it. Yay! Okay. So it is possible to score goals, and uh, they're going off to have some sort of uh, beer party, I'm assuming. So that's ice hockey. It's a pretty fun, fast-paced game that works really well on Famicom Disk System. Next, we've got the Nintendo classic Metroid. I love that theme music. And the great thing about the Disk System version, it has a save file. That's right, you can save in Metroid. How awesome is that? I'm going to play as uh, Samus. Samus. Now, when you load a game, you're going to get this often. It says, Omachi kudasai, which means please wait. Uh, now, this does happen, especially when you've got two sides, uh, an A side and a B side on a disc. I think uh, Zelda would have two sides, but surprisingly a lot of the games, even uh, Mario or Mario 2, will only have one side of the disc. It does take a little while to load, and now it's saying, please put in the B side, so we'll do that now, just turn the disc over. 
and how much good is I? So it's still loading. I don't find the load times too bad though, because I remember the early CD loading times. They were a bit of a pain. Uh, this might be a little bit longer, but this is 1986 technology. What was their excuse? It was the 90s. Everything had to happen extreme and quickly. I hated the 90s. I'm just throwing that out there. Although I must admit, this one is kind of long. So if you've got a drink, drink it. Now, here we go. You will notice pretty much straight away that it's the first screen. Now, before you think, oh God, this didn't save my progress where it immediately left off, it's okay. What it does do is that it does allow you to see the map and all the areas you've explored thus far. And you've also got your missiles, which are pretty great. And you can also drop uh, the bombs when you're a little ball. Morph ball, I do believe it's called. Morph bombs, morph ball, morphs balls. So anyway, immediately you can always kind of get down to this uh, subterraneous level, which you couldn't in the first part of the game anyway. The trick here is not to die too quickly. You still only start off with uh, 30 health, which is kind of annoying, especially since I've been used to playing the SNES version recently. Alright, let's just go through here and more of that creepy music. I really like this music, I don't know why. Now we all know that this platform here leads to the next section. What does that mean in the Famicom Disk System? other than the fact that I just disappeared due to the interlacing, it means another load screen. Sometimes when it loads between two areas, it won't necessarily tell you it's loading. So sometimes it'll look like it's just frozen. But my advice is be patient, get yourself a beer or a bourbon in my case, and just kind of wait it out. Waiting, waiting, bourbon waiting. Yeah, okay, the load times are a little bit bad. Still, I maintain not as bad as the original PS1. Nope. And we're back. Now, since it's loaded this new area, the action does still happen pretty quickly. The reason why I was mostly invisible there is due to deinterlacing. And oh god, it's one of those things from Commander Keen? Ouch. Steroids, apparently. Now this is a particularly difficult area, especially if you go through the red door here, which I'm about to. So basically I'm going to show you a death screen. What happens when you die, and believe me I will die incredibly quickly here, like that. You get the option to either continue or save. Now the brilliant thing is if you do choose to continue, you will end up back in the same area. If you choose to save, you might end up back in a previous area, but with all your weapons. Well, loving this version of Metroid. Next we have Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, that's right. Super Mario Brothers was released for the Famicom Disk System as well. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because I reckon there is actually a slight degradation in quality here. At least when you compare it to the original cart. Now, it could be that my television is from a different region, but it just doesn't look quite the same. The controls are solid and it still feels pretty good, but uh, I don't know, it just goes to show that not everything was better on the disc system. But hey, what can I say? It's Mario. Ah, my old nemesis, Super Mario Bros. 2. Japan style. Now, this was originally released for the Famicom Disk System. It was to give the players of Super Mario Bros. a bit more of a challenge. And they succeeded in spades. Now, you'll notice there is a bit more things in the background and a slight graphical upgrade. Uh, you've got the uh, poisonous mushroom there, which I think was purple on the All-Stars cart. Now, this is actually the first time I've even seen the original Super Mario Bros. 2 as I've only ever seen the Mario All-Stars card version. It's just as difficult, uh, but plays pretty much identically to the original Super Mario Brothers. And the clouds have eyes, which is kind of freaky to me. Now, I'm only going to play the first level of this game, because I want to come back to it a bit later on and give you a bit more of a full sample 
of what this game has to offer. I'm evil like that. The final game I've got to show you today is Famicom Grand Prix 2 3D Hot Rally. Now here's the select screen, game start entry class, the name, service data. Uh, I think I'm going to choose the first card. Uh, course 1, course 2, course 3, course 1, set to side B. Once again you have to take the disc out, flip it over and set it in there. This I still don't find to be too much of a pain. I really like this game. I can't even tell you the exact reasons why. Now, first of all, you've got to set where your repair point is going to be. So along the way, you can choose which of these routes you can take. So just remember to make sure your repair route is on the route that you remember to take. And off we go. A is accelerate and B is brake as per usual. Now, first of all, I should apologize for the instrument readings down on the bottom of the screen. Now, this happens because we deinterlace our videos, which means we take away all those annoying lines that come off recording from a television. Unfortunately, this has unforeseen ramifications sometimes. What's even more disturbing is the fact that we've got these goalposts here that look like dinosaurs with eggs in their mouths. Now, now that's pretty weird. Cool, but, but weird. It handles pretty well. In fact, I'd say it handles better than Rad Racer. I don't even know why I think that, but you need to press up to change gears. This does give you a certain advantage. If you know how to do it, you can do it at the opportune time. It is a rally, so it is a pretty long course. The cars in front of you do provide somewhat of an obstacle, but they won't kill you, although you will take damage. As the screen underneath is unforeseen, I can't really show you that. The H balloons are kind of health, which means that you can repair some of the damage you've done. I thought there were nitro bombs at first to make you go faster, uh, but you can't do that in this game. It is still pretty easy to hit things despite the fact that you're on a three lane freeway. That does change though pretty quickly, and I love the way that you kind of jump over everything. Now, coming up, is our first choice. Left or right? Let's go left. Now take a couple of seconds for it to reintegrate properly. There we go. Now it's still kind of a three-way lane sort of whoa system. Now this to me looks like kind of a, uh, a dirt track I suppose. You're still going pretty much just as fast as you were. You just need to keep on the middle track. And those bushes are freaky. Freaky, deaky little faces that freak me out every time I crash into them. But once again, like the dinosaur lampposts, I think they're pretty cool. Like most racing games, it'll give you a direction in which you can go. It's a really fun game, and you can play this if you have the Famicom 3D system. Unfortunately, I don't, but I'm enjoying it anyway. That was our final game. In conclusion, I gotta say, I really like the Famicom Disk System. It was pretty innovative for its time. It allows you to record new games on old disks as well as save data, which was almost unheard of for a console system back in the mid 80s. Now, this system did have its flaws, but they were mainly hardware flaws. That poses a bit of a problem for collectors today. Getting a working one involves pretty much getting a new belt installed and recalibrating the device. But if you can get one, I would highly recommend it. The games are pretty cool, and in their original form, they still play very, very well. Thank you very much for listening. I'm AC. This was Bit Seizure. Yeah.